uh, you know, there's not, there's very little to do anymore. You know, I my my whole existence revolved around doing stand up comedy. Sure, and likewise. I can't stand up or do comedy anymore now. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> well, you can I, sit sit down and do comedy. I, well, I can sit down and just ramble. I, you know, I I don't know. I my I have no reason anymore. I always thought you don't feel a purpose. Yeah, well, you know, there's no purpose. I've been, I'm doing a lot of painting. Yeah. Of, well, artistic paint. No, 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 just oh, walls. The, just, the house yeah, painting. Yeah, a few, a few sort of uh, coats. Mm -hmm. I've given seven coats so far. Seven coats. To, uh, you know, and it's not even my house. <laughs> it really isn't my <laughs> no, house. No. It's my, it's my <laughs> father-in-law's house and he's dead. So right. he's not going to complain. I can have, a, you know, any colour I choose. So what was the reason for you moving to this house initially? Well, he got sick uh, and uh, my, my father-in-law was a character. He was a, a, mm. a gold fossicker mm. and a real tough guy. And when he got sick, he got seriously sick and he just refused to die. Mm. He just said, no, I'm not dying. Yeah, he, yeah he was a very, um, not, I don't know if stubborn's the right word, but a very forthright in what he wanted to do with his life. And yeah, what, I'd say uh, stubborn. Okay. Stubborn right. is probably Stub more stu accurate. Okay. He's going, no, I don't want to die. I'm not, I'm not dying. This is nonsense. And the doctor's saying, Brian, you've got about six months to live now. Right. You know, he was 86 yeah. and he's riddled with cancer. He's, nah, mm. I'm not dying. I've got to do some gardening. He was trying to do electric, electrical work. Well, from his wheelchair. He said, no, no, you hold, up, hold this wire here. I'm going, Brian, I'm going to die. Yeah, you're sitting in a conductor, Brian. Yeah, yeah, you? don't worry. No, but he did all his works. Like, he built the house himself. Yeah, did he was a real handyman. Did all yeah. the electricity himself. He's not qualified. <laughs> You know, but, and you can tell it's all just these wires are coming everywhere. And, and, um, and then, but the best part was they gave him these amazing painkillers. Mm. Um, you know, endones and things like that, and, mm. and they're which amazing, you know, it's, mm -hmm. you know, the best sleeps. Yeah, how, how do you know? I, I googled it. Right. And, um, but you know, he would he refused to take them. He'd say, no, 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 I don't want to get addicted. So, oh, wow. all right, Brian, well, I'll, I'll just throw these away for you. <laughs> Seven boxes of endones. Wow. They're nice. No, I've heard. How, is that, um, what is it? Um, it's what, opiate. Uh, yeah, it's but opiate. there's a name for it. It's like a lot of people, it's like one right. of the. No, but there's a special name for the the specific drug. Addiction. No, no, for the actual drug. Opiates. Yeah, but there's a name for this particular drug. It's what. Um, no, it's what Tom Petty. Ha um, oh, fentanyl. Fentanyl. That's oh it. yes, he also yes. has fentanyl. Yes. They moved him up to fentanyl, yes. so the endones were, you know, redundant. And what, what happened to all that? I don't know, but they just disappeared, okay. over, you know, very slowly. Was this when the house when? He, when he eventually passed away, uh, you threw a lot of stuff out in the house. We threw a lot of stuff out. Now, now he used to love collecting um, or going on he, gold, he, gold digs, he was right? A cold, uh, he was a gold fossicker. That's right. all you, you know. That's pretty much apart from building the odd dodgy table, right? And um, and just electrocuting himself on a regular basis. He uh, he would he'd go and, and and he did. He would find gold. He was very good. Now he would take off to like the Northern Territory, take Kalgoorlie. off to, to take off the WA, and yeah. he would um, he'd go all over Australia panning for gold, yeah. searching for gold. Hundreds right? of thousands of dollars worth of gold. He was the expert, and people now, who travelled with him yeah. would admire him. Say, Brian, and he'd say, Mate, when I when I find the nugget, I don't tell people. Just put it in my pocket. Is, is, is that a nugget in your, in your pocket? <laughs> Right. <laughs> now he hoarded this gold, right? Like he, he in, and he and he told you. You mentioned to me something about a gold map, this or is a map true. of gold that this he had. This is a crazy people that are, that live around me. Well, yeah. he's not living anymore. Sadly, he was a lovely guy actually, but quite insane. Right. right? So he before, he said before I die, he, st he had the family in a meeting and said, look, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not getting any younger. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I'm getting older. Mm. He figured that out that finally. Wow, that's and, uh, quite an insight. And he said, "Now I've I've hidden gold, jars of gold in the house, mm -hmm. and I won't just let you. I won't tell you where they are. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a, a treasure map, and just before I die, I'm gonna draw the treasure map, and it'll be easy to follow, and you'll find the gold, and you can split the gold between you." Right. And he died and forgot. To do the map. And it was like just he was fading. You did, know? did you did you ask him again where well, where, where's his map of? Well, it didn't seem cool to ask him when he was dying in hospital. He's no, just like yeah. fading in and out of consciousness. And going, Brian, I love <laughs> you, but <laughs> where where's the map? Where's, where's the, the map? gold? Where's the map? <laughs> but, but he but he didn't think he was going to die, so he didn't bother preparing he, he, a map. He, or he was having... in denial. That's right. right. He was in denial right up until the the end. You know, and he's he's scared of dying. I think. Yeah. And um. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, but we, we can't find the gold. So but but we found that we found you a little threw, bit. You threw out a lot. <laughs> a lot. You had I you know. had a, you told me that you had a skip outside of your house. Yeah. Well, that you had thrown away a lot. And look, he's, it's a big house. Yeah. And and he's he had a lot of stuff, and I thought there's got to be some treasures here. There's got to be some antiques. And yeah. Nothing. It's just shit, <laughs> rubbish. Man, I swear he had like eleven boxes of uh, empty peach cans, huh. like cans of peaches that he's eaten. And thought I can't. I'm not gonna throw away the well, cans. He's trying to recycle. No, th no, these are from like the 1960s. Oh wow! Like you know, brands I've never even heard of. <laughs> you know, like, uh, the, like instructions in Russian or something. I he had the most bizarre. He had a box of uh, just empty jars, boxes oh. and boxes and boxes of empty containers of things. Just so you rubbish. Just threw, did you check inside these jars and containers before throwing them out though? Because he did say that there was gold around the house right yeah, or the map so yeah, yeah yeah this is where that's a good question and i'm prepared to answer that mm -hmm. as long as we turn off the camera <laughs> no look i i probably did you know like i did find um once I, there was he hid them in like really obvious places mm. but you would easily confuse it you, you'd easily mis mistake them for rubbish yeah these little remember the little um plastic containers uh, that you put film in yeah the film and canisters the, the, sure the canisters. with the gray lid and the yeah. exactly yeah. yeah so you had these uh, once i picked up one it was just covered in cobwebs and dirt and picked it up and there was like 10 grand worth of gold what just thought, jammed into the yeah in, into the canister and i thought Shit, I how just, many of those <laughs> Did you throw I threw out? a lot out. Yeah. yeah, a lot. Not thinking that there might be gold in the film canisters. I threw maybe twenty <laughs> film canisters, and um, <laughs> we had this big skip, and it had all the rubbish. And unfortunately, I we had like several skips, mm -hmm. and that those canisters were thrown out maybe three skips ago. Mm. But uh, but my brother-in-law and my wife and I were. This is so typical. This I know. <laughs> I said, this is such an Akmal story. I said, I think I might have thrown more out. So the next thing you know, all three of us are up to our knees in rubbish, uh. looking for film canisters. Guess how many we found? None. <laughs> we found none because I threw them all out. And uh, so they're probably in some tip somewhere. Uh. You know, if you if you go to the Queen Bee and tip with a metal detector. You're probably gonna. Yeah. There, there are people that I, I remember as a kid going to the tip. Remember you just see mounds, but then yeah, you yeah. see some lonesome guy out there with a metal detector just going over yeah. stuff and rummaging through. That's the guy that started coronavirus. Yeah. He caught it <laughs> in a tip. <laughs> yeah. Now we used to go. We used to have a tip and where we lived. Yeah. And we used to go. I, I, I love that scavenging thing. Yeah, it was I, I remember Tempe tip going out there. Yeah, it's good fun. Yeah. It's good fun when you can find something but with Brian unfortunately it was all shit rubbish well not all you know there was some some value to it there's yeah. tens of thousands of dollars of gold which well, was so he thrown says, out. I don't know I think he was I don't know I hope not I look now what, to, to make myself feel good I'm just gonna say he was he had Alzheimer's he was de had serious <laughs> dementia and he was that's, that's a narrative you, you've told yourself yeah, yeah it's best it's best because you What's know. the point of worrying about it now? Yeah. Huh? What's worrying the point? about lost opportunities. Gold. I mean, you know, come on. He just never threw away anything. Mm. And um, he, he was like, he, he he worked in a thing called the Men's Shed. Right. It's not what you're thinking. No, it's a, it's a not, group of men that come together to share their stories. And yeah. It's like yeah. a support group, There right? is the Men's Shed in Oxford Street. Very right, different. Yeah. That's the Tool Shed. Oh, is it the Tool yeah, Shed? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He also has a Tool Shed. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know... Like going through his stuff, like it, things would come in as donations, but right. it's just like you know, bags of hessian. He's got like tons of hessian. <laughs> Why? I don't know. And it's not even like a big piece of hessian, it's like little tiny hessians. Really? What do you have these for, Brian? Oh, that's uh, like a rat's wonderland, though, never, right? exactly. Yeah. Exactly. He uh, he, sc he scammed these two chairs, these antique chairs that were um, in a, a gondola. That was uh, oh, in, in right. Canberra. He huh. took him. He just took him. He Those little round chairs. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like, no, no, no. I don't know what they were, but like antiques. And he yeah. just left them in in this uh, underground shed. And mm. the rats ate them. The right. rats ate. You, you've, had, you've had a lot of inst instances with rats. The bush rats. Yes. And now these are the the suburban rats. The suburban rats ate my. The, I've never said this sentence before. The suburban rats ate my father-in-law's antique chairs. <laughs> That's a unique sentence. It's never been said before. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, look, it's uh, so basically uh, the, during this pandemic, I'm spending my time 
trying to be as productive as possible. So, so you're painting the house. I'm painting, as you can and, see from my clothes. And 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 people think, you know, he must be an artist. He's got paint all over. His, no, that's just that's the fourth coat. Yeah. With un, underlay. Un, underlay. Undercoat. Undercoat. And yeah. and what, what are you what are you painting specifically? Walls, Walls mostly. Right. Yeah. What colors? Uh, you know, sort of like sandstone colors. Oh, really? Like, like the pyramids. So it's like an Egyptian tomb. It's ex exactly. Really? You know, yeah. Wow. And yeah. what does what does your wife Kate think of this? She doesn't know. Oh, really? <laughs> she does. She hasn't been into those rooms. She, she hasn't. It's downstairs where I'm painting, and she just she's quite happy to um, you know, to uh, just to give her some space. Yeah. That's so the thing. Occupy your time. Well, you know, th there are advantages to to this virus. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, people may disagree, but um, like I'm spending more time at home, mm -hmm. so I'm seeing more of my wife. Yeah, how's uh, that? Well, it's stressful. Yeah. Because you know, for the last, uh, you know, whatever years, 50, 16 years, yeah, I've been have. away for most of the year. Now mm. she has to. Now she may actually get to know me, mm. and that's that's risky, <laughs> because in the past, once people got to know me, you know, you, you know my history, <laughs> and uh, and we. And we're being more intimate, more frequently. Oh, now. that's good. Yeah, except wow. we're keeping the 1.5 meters apart. Oh, throughout that yeah, intimacy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she's so, happy about that. Yeah, yeah. She she insists it's 1.5 kilometers. I said, no, 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 it's 1.5 meters. Said, oh, okay. So, so how is she like with you being around more often? Like, honestly, like, what's well, her, uh, you know, what, what is her? I'm very annoying, you know, mm. and and uh, and so she's <laughs> she's getting very annoyed, <laughs> and she's very what, clean. What's an instance? What's something that would annoy her? <sighs> God, I make a sandwich and don't use a plate. Just, just use, make it on the bench. Make it on the bench, exactly. And then you clean up after. You say, what's happening? I'm on the bench. And, and well, I clean up eventually when it's needed. When right. it's, you know, I don't over clean because right. that's an illness. Right. right? She, like, that's, I don't know. In this, in this day and age, I think over cleaning. I've been going around the whole apartment and I, I go around with spray and wipe. Yeah, I spray yeah. the door handles. Yeah. I spray all the cupboard handles. Yeah. And, and then, then you wipe. And then I wipe it down. But then mm. for the double one, I go around with this like Dettol disinfectant mm. and then wash them over, leave them for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I go back with a clean um, like uh, bucket of warm water mm -hmm. and then wipe everything down. It's so I find that that process is, uh, you know, it is the most... Well, I don't know about therapeutic, but it does put my mind at ease to know that mm -hmm. I have a sterilized environment. You know, you know what would put your mind at ease, mm -hmm. and you don't have to do that? Endones. Endone. Just take an endone a day. All right. <laughs> you won't care about how filthy you are. Or, no. You know, I, we don't want to promote drugs on this on this um, podcast here, but um, they're great. Yeah. They're what, really what, what, what has been your experience? With, now, these are Brian's endones? Endones? Yeah, well, yeah. Brian's dead, so he won't be using them. Right. And there's no point wasting them. Right. So, uh, yeah, I, t I, you know, look, this so is going to get me in trouble. But, look, you see, the government is so restrictive about what people are allowed to have and what are they, they, it sh No drug should be illegal. Mm. I don't think any drug should be illegal because people will take drugs regardless. Mm -hmm. And if they care about people's health, then they should just let them have the, you know. And, and it's it just, you know, helps me to sleep and it's quite... So have you been taking, the, are you still taking? Because we had a discussion. This was, yeah, yeah, this yeah. was a few months ago. Well, Wait, I, can we edit this later? Will, will, will we be editing this later? I don't know. It depends on what we talk about. Oh, yeah, no, I'm already... Because I've been very concerned, and I called oh, yeah, up, yeah. and then Arj, uh, Arj Barker, Arj uh, Barker our, yeah. our friend, he was, our very, he was very concerned. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, and he spoke to you about it, I spoke to you about it. Yes, yes. Um, very yeah. concerned from and, my friends. And I, I, look, I, but basically, you, you give the impression that you care for my health and safety. And well-being, yes. But I think you've got ulterior motives. I think you okay. want you want my endones. That's what it is. <laughs> is it? Oh, because that's what I did we'll with Brian. It. I said, Brian, you know, you, you will get addicted. That was the technique. You're gonna yeah. get addicted. Let me throw them away for you. Then you yeah. won't even be tempted. Right. I said, good on you, Akmal. That's good. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what you're up to. So, so you think I want to do the endone? Maybe. You honestly believe that that I would want to do the endone, yeah. or is this your way of just holding it, or an excuse to hold on to them so that you don't give them away? Yeah, a little from column A. <laughs> from Columbia. But what if we, what if we were to flush them down the toilet together? That would break my heart. <laughs> what is it I now? Would, I would, you know, what happen, I would honestly dive in. And after try, it. Yes, I it'd would be like dive, train spotting. I would be like train spotting where he dives in after the exactly. After I would be pills. doing that because look, you know, I hate I hate the authorities telling us 
what we should and shouldn't. I love how you bring this around to the authorities <laughs> to justify. Well, it's all about the authorities, you know. But, like, but, in, you know, but in, the authorities in, have nothing to do with whether you take them or throw them out. That's because what have the authorities got to do with that? Hmm. Look, I, I'm just trying to find logic to this argument. No, here. no. Look, the, the argument is right. Getting back to the authorities, they they dictate to us what we are allowed to have and what we're not allowed to have. Right. Nothing to do with health. Right. I mean, alcohol causes yeah, I, I, huge problems in in society. Sure, sure. And, and tobacco kills more people of lung cancer mm -hmm. than anything else. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't know anything else. Well, let's just go okay, with that. Okay, okay, it okay. sounds more sounds authoritative. Good, sounds good. If you don't question it, people just believe it. <laughs> you know, nine out of ten people will believe any bullshit you tell them. Well, they do. Well, look, look at the current political state in the states. That's right. Exactly. Uh, it, who's, who's in charge? But the thing is, so they decide that because because it's an economic thing, mm -hmm. you know. And um, and if they made all drugs legal, people, you know, you know, I'll tell you something, Joel. Mm -hmm. Listen to yeah, this. I'm listening. In Alice Springs, mm -hmm. they the, the, they ban alcohol because of the indigenous community. When was this? This was quite a while ago. In certain certain areas, mm -hmm. have been banned, so you can't get alcohol. Thinking in this stupidity, thinking, oh well, if they can't get the alcohol, they won't drink alcohol. Therefore, they'll get a job and get off their asses and mm -hmm. contribute to society. No, the problem is much more complicated than that sure. because they went, the kids, the young kids are getting, buying paint and they're sniffing mm. paint all mm. day and getting yeah. high off the paint. What are you going to do, ban paint? Yeah. Can't ban paint. Or can Not you? Not during this era. Not during, no. you got a lot of work to do. <laughs> I need paint. But, but this is the problem though. I don't sniff a... paint. That's dangerous. Yes. Don't do that. But I, I was just making a point with that last sure. story. Sure, and, uh, and it is a valid point that you bring up, but I think the problem's a lot deeper than them just saying, listen, we're going to fix the problem, That's no right. more alcohol. So, well, why is why, the indigenous why culture drinking so much alcohol? Yeah, you, let's, now let, we're on track. So let's go yeah. back into the history here, and it's very evident why Mm. The repercussions of many, many years ago mm. result in that behavior now. Of course. Right? So, um, so what is it in your history then that's resulted in the behavior of uh, wanting to oh, have these yeah. uh, opiates? Well, I didn't know this was going to turn into a, a, a uh, psychotherapy session. <laughs> he's <just, laughs> going to say, wow. I, I'm afraid our time's up. <laughs> Same time next week. <laughs> well, time she's up. We'll delve into that next yeah, week. Yeah, well, that's, that's a big question, Joel. That's, but what that's, do you think it is, uh, Sally? I, Let's not if get you into things. I, you know, m my uncle did something. What? No. He stuck a hose up his ass. Uncle Zamir. Not up my ass. Oh. <laughs> uncle Zamir. <laughs> yeah, grew up with a crazy family. Look, yeah. I don't know. I, I look. I, this is a different argument. Let's mm. not make. Oh, it, I'm just uh, trying to find consistency to the uh, to, to the what we're talking about. Well, here no, because it, it, but because you, you brought up a valid point that is yeah, yeah. about the Aboriginal community, which is a valid point that is yeah, uh, yeah. that stems far back further than just That's simply right. get well, rid of. More people statistically, and this is this is accurate. You can mm -hmm. check this. More, more people die of prescription drugs sure. than illegal drugs. Which and that's spiked over the last few years. So and spiked. the major drug is what we're yeah. talking about here: yeah. fentanyl. Yeah, which is. You know, it's claimed many, like Prince, yeah. um, uh, Tom Petty yeah. last year. Like, the, and, you know, so it's not only yeah, yeah, just... But, but look, most people that it kills aren't that talented. No, so they no. Don't matter. But, but no, but it's killing so many people. That's just a couple yeah, of yeah. people that are... Oh, you just happened to mention some of the most talented. I mean, Prince. Of, of you know, course. Of Michael course. Jackson. Yeah, Michael Jackson. What, what did he... Um, he, he was a sleeping thing as well. Yeah, that, 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 uh, yeah uh, that was prescribed by his yes, doctor. Yes, it's was... terrible when talented people die, but when yes. idiots die, is so, it really a big well, well, loss? Well, then, you know, I don't want to see Sally added to the category. Well, I'm not, yeah. I'm not Prince. Well, no, but, but within the <laughs> world, pauper. within the world, <laughs> within the world of comedy, you've made a noble contribution. Yeah, and, 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 and but just as a friend, yeah, you know, yeah. to to to. But see. look, look, I'm, I don't want to be morbid here. But I don't mean it to be morbid at all. No. But really, once you're dead, mm. once you're no longer on this earth and your body has rotted, mm -hmm. this is supposed to be a comedy podcast, but it's turned. You, you've got a way of turning it dark. <laughs> you're right? Well, I, just want, I want to get to the no, bottom of yeah, what the, the, yeah, yeah. So, where this is where look, it's stemming from. I mean, really, I, I have always been of the belief that mm. if you, um, it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you live a, a rich life, Mm. It doesn't have to be a long life, mm -hmm. you know, as long as it's rich and while you're there. But once you're gone, it doesn't matter. You, it's irrelevant. Sure, sure. I but mean, the, friends, but the, you can still enjoy his music. 
Mm. You know, you were never going to get on with him. You know, well, you were you're never going to... He, he actually went to the amazing Jonathan show. Oh, well, there you go. See the, and he invited him to Paisley Park to, oh, well, to hang out with Dan, him. Dan, I look like a fuckwit now. <laughs> yeah, well, but generally but, speaking... But, but, um, but no, I didn't meet him. That was, uh, that was um, yeah, yeah, after my yeah, time. But, but, uh, but the... Uh, but what, but, what okay, I'm saying sorry. is people place too much importance okay, but this on... Okay, but this is about you. Yes. What, what, how do you think Kate would feel about this? Oh, Kate doesn't know. She will now. But <laughs> she doesn't, she just, you know, look, uh, look, look, the thing is, it's going to be solved very quickly because I'm almost, I've almost run out. out. Right. And, you know, doctors then, give, I told you about the Indian doctor that I went to visit, no. that I went to see uh, for, a, for a consultation. I, I was, I was going through a difficult time and I, I was, when was this? It was a while, a few years ago. Okay. And I wanted to, um, I, I wanted a referral to see a psychiatrist, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and I said, I'd like to see a psychiatrist. And you know, always sus when you're the only one in the waiting room and he sees you straight away, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And he's sitting there and he's drinking a cup of tea during mm, the really? consulta yeah, consultation. Huh. And he goes, um, I said, I'd like to get a referral uh, to a psychiatrist. He goes, psychiatrist or psychologist? Mm. I said, no, psychiatrist, you know, the psychiatrist is... Because a psychiatrist um, gives medication, psychologists... Well, that's what I said to him. Oh, said, really? Is that what you yeah, said to him? Oh, right. I said, look, <laughs> a psychiatrist is a medical doctor uh, that can prescribe medication, and a psychologist is really just a you know, glorified counsellor. Hmm. He goes, yes, I know. I said, well, you know now, because I just told you. <laughs> he goes, I knew before. <laughs> and I said, "What? So you, you, you questioned?" I like that you already get combative with him. Oh, well, yeah, I was, I was not in a good space. But, but this, was this part of the whole plot? Like, he definitely needs to see a psychiatrist. Like, was this part of? No, the, no, no. Oh, no. He was just being rude. Oh, okay. Right. And this arrogance, that yeah. arrogance, like you know, and, and he says, uh, and then out of nowhere, as he's writing the referral, he, he takes a sip of tea and he goes. I will not be prescribing any opioids. <laughs> I said, this is, I didn't ask you for opioids. Uh, but, you know. He was like a prophet. He could see the future. Maybe. Maybe <laughs> that third eye. That Indian third eye. And so did he sign you up to go and see a... Well, he gave a, me a referral, yeah. For a psychiatrist or psychologist? I don't know. What is the difference? <laughs> I do not know. <laughs> no, no. It was to a psychiatrist. Okay. It was actually, uh, uh, yeah. But uh, we're, I'm revealing because you're Because Kate, um, your, your so, wife, she, she's studied psychology. Yes. She's a counsellor herself. Yes, she is. And I, so was she... Was I, I'm she, not so much a husband as a case study. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> you know? Well, she's very understanding. She's, she's a very, very um, she's a very intelligent lady, a very compassionate, empathetic she person. Is. Yes, And yes. I think that, um, you know, that, that's a good thing for your... Your, yeah, well, you know, your relationship. Some people marriage. think that she's more my carer. <laughs> she's my carer. No, but uh, look, the the uh, the drug thing. I, look, I I think they're over. And this is probably going to be considered irresponsible of me. Mm. But I, I think they kind of. I just resent them telling us sure. you know, what we shouldn't shouldn't sure. Ingest. But I've been I've been privy to. Uh, you know, a lot of drugs. I haven't been a drug taker myself, but no. I've been around people who are drug mm. addicts and yeah. lived with people who are drug addicts. And, yeah, yeah. and it does, um, you know, it does take something from you over prolonged use. Yeah, uh, money. I find, yeah. Money. But, 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 a lot, but a lot more, you know, of, of, uh, well, it depends. of your life. I mean, like, look, look, it depends on a few things. It depends on how uh, susceptible you are to addiction. Mm-hmm. It depends and now, would you say, Sally, that you have an addictive personality? No. No? No. I, could I give some examples? Of my addictive personality? Yes. Sure. Can I give, just give one? Give as many as you like. Hi-fi. Huh? Hi-fi. Hi-fi? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi-fi, yeah. I had an addiction to hi-fi. Yeah. Yes. I was, I was getting very expensive uh, equipment and crushing it and then snorting it. Yeah. Snorting speakers <laughs> and no. yeah, subwoofers. I do, I do have so, an addictive so, personality. And, and I for get me, fixated about So for me as a, a dear old friend of yours, yes. I am, um, you know, uh, 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 I'm just very wary. You know, with, with the hi-fi, you know, I would voice my, my thoughts at times because yeah, I saw the amount of money that went into that. But in a situation like this, when it comes down to your well-being, yeah, you yeah. know, I, I'm very, um, you know, vocal in in, but, in my um, yeah. But look, concerns. You know, we have a friend, a mutual friend of ours, who is not a drug taker. He's very clean cut. He's a father, mm -hmm. and he's about 10, 11 years younger than me. Mm -hmm. 
or more yeah. actually and um and he's got cancer and he's dying yeah you know and uh we, we have another friend dave grant who was a health fanatic mm. very fit very strong had the same cancer that our friend has the too. same cancer mm-hmm. deteriorated and died and he would never he would Dave wouldn't even be in the same room if someone's smoking a joint. Mm. He'd be in a different because he was so concerned about his sure, health. Sure. And then you get other people who, you know, my I have a a, a granddad who smoked hash his entire life. Mm. Smoked hash and put seven uh, spoons of sugar in his tea. I'm not exaggerating, seven <laughs> spoons, and he would drink it. Equivalent and, uh, to a Coca Cola. Huh? You, we, Equivalent. Uh, well, he, yeah. he he just had the worst diet, and and he would smoke hash all night mm. and this is in Cairo and he'd play um uh what's that it's not chess it's um checkers checkers he'd play yeah. checkers all night and smoke hash and I could smell the hash and he lived till he was about 94 mm. and he didn't even die of an illness he just kind of died yeah sure some people have that like our friend Jonathan the amazing Jonathan, Jonathan is, yeah. he's, since, the, since the age of 18 you know yeah. doing hard drugs and he's now what 61 yeah and he, he's got all his medical conditions, yeah, yeah. Um, cardiomyopathy, type 2 diabetes. But he may have had that regardless of the drug taking or not. He's probably in the family. Yeah, however, cardiomyopathy you is one of You always have an however, don't you? Ca- cardiomyopathy yeah. is one of the symptoms of um, yeah. methamphetamine. Yeah, but look, people make choices. Okay, so if you let me put something to you. Mm-hmm. If you had a choice, look. Let me just say too, I'm not judgmental. I, I, I right. people that take drugs, right. but when but when I, I see a, but when I see a friend me. who's taking a drug that uh, has such a high fatality rate, yeah, yeah. then I'm concerned. But look, uh, you know, if you had a choice, say, of living to sixty and having a great time, mm-hmm. and and just at sixty, you just go check out, mm-hmm. but you've you know you've you've partied on and you've you've done some for others as well because that brings sure. its own joys sure. or you can live till 98 and spend the last 30 years in a hospice in incredible pain shitting your pants having people change your nappies you know which i've seen mm-hmm. uh, you know what would you choose really i mean what's but the point of that that's that the quality of life plays a big part i could i feel like i could live to 60 Mm-hmm. and still have a quality of life mm-hmm. without opioids. No, but I'm giving a hypothetical here, which oh. you just totally ignored. <laughs> How convenient. <laughs> well, but of course, I, yeah, I don't want to be sitting in a nursing home, yeah. Yeah, dribbling on myself, and, mm. I, and I've but, seen that. But people, but people want to prolong their lives but I'm not prolonging. Regardless. But I don't do drugs because I don't. I don't <coughs> not do drugs because I think it's going to prolong my life. Mm. For me, and like I said, this is just me personally. Mm. I just got no real desire to take drugs. Mm. So it's that's it's pretty. But that's fine. Pretty straight up that's for a me. That's choice. For but, you, yeah. but and I got no issue with people that do take drugs. Mm. But if I see friends that are taking drugs. A specific drug that has a high fatality rate and other friends that i've seen ruin relationships marriages yeah friendships but look, careers yeah. as a result of drugs yeah that for me but you know i feel that that's a, a, a yeah. it's something that's look, not not a productive people you know. are responsible for their life journey right yeah if you're gonna you can I mean uh, the biggest cause of domestic violence is what alcohol alcohol mm-hmm. right which is legal it's advertised it's promoted yes, yes. Uh, you know sporting um, events mm-hmm. are, are promoted through it mm-hmm. or alcohol is promoted through um, to it. anyway <laughs> <I> <laughs> a lot can, of people make a lot of money out yeah. of it so, a lot so of people make a lot of money out of it yeah. and it's destructive and it's sure. it, it has uh, far, far more uh, of a violent effect, you know, become violent when you drink much sure. more than if you, when you smoke pot. Sure. And that's well known. Sure. And that's well known, right? And uh, so people are responsible. There are a lot of people, the majority of people drink and don't bash their partners. Sure. The sure. majority of people drink and don't drive home. Mm-hmm. You know, but there's always people who, who become alcoholics, mm-hmm. whose life will, and I know, I, got, I know people, we both know people who've deteriorated, their lives have deteriorated, become homeless, but that's ultimately their responsibility. It's not for some authority to say, no. Sure, you know, sure. That, that's my point. Right. Speaking of authorities in this, which yeah. I, I agree, I don't think authorities should, uh, you know, should legalize and shouldn't yeah. be, but, but here's the case in point. Mm. It is legal to take these dr- these prescription drugs. Yes. And 
Oh, if you get a, a, unless you get that an Indian doctor, well, yeah. you will not discover <laughs> anything, anything. But there's still, no. high, there's still high fatality rates. Yes, but you know, uh, there are high fatality rates with every, with you know people. We're here for a limited time, sure. right? And and you know, just the end of life is not always. It's not. It's not such a. It's you know. It's all right. It's okay. You know, <laughs> Michael Jackson had a fantastic life, right? Yeah. King of pop, mm -hmm. died at fifty. That's all right. Yeah. That's okay. We've still got the albums. Yeah. Can enjoy the albums. I can still do some of the moves. Mm -hmm. Not as well as I used to. Mm. I used to have hair like Michael Jackson. Did you see the documentary? Yeah. yeah. I, th this is it? No, no, no. The other one, the, the um, Leaving Neverland. Oh, you know, that, yeah, that, no, that big. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, look, I can't imagine. Honestly, I can't even picture Michael Jackson having sex no. or having an erection. It's, it's just blocked out. It just no, it yeah. doesn't seem right, like believable. But um, and you know, and you know, after how many years has he been? He's been dead for what? Ten years? Um, yeah, I think it was, was it like oh nine or something. Yeah, done? and suddenly this guy remembers. Oh yeah, I was molested by him. How much did the other guy get? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not sure. There was, but I uh, doubt it. I, I, I did watch that documentary, and the people that were interviewed have compelling stories. Yeah. However, I find that the documentary style that it was, how it was made, it wasn't really a. The, the agenda was already set. The story yeah, was yeah. already set. They knew the story that they were going to tell right from the get go. Yeah. And there was a lot of information that was omitted from that documentary that, not necessarily. Um, takes away from those accusations, but I think mm. should have been in the documentary. Like the, yeah, I look. He, the, there was like key things. Like, well, I'll just give you yeah, an example. Yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. One, one of the um, one of them, um, the victims, said that he was molested in the clock tower that was at the train station on um, at Neverland. Oh, yeah, now, cool. after this documentary came out, the actual guy who designed and did the blueprints for that came forward and said, well, look, we got the date on the blueprints. That clock tower wasn't even built during that time there that these go. accusations are being thrown Case out. Case dismissed. But, but th that doesn't take away, for me, it could have still happened, but that is a key fact that should have been presented within the documentary so that yeah. we can at least get some to and fro See, with the thing with is these like, this, this is my theory right i think michael jackson he was a genius mm -hmm. right and um there's a comedian who says you know if you had a choice between i used to get bill, bullied bill at school. Maher. bill maher bill, had that routine i got yeah. bill bullied at school i you know, shouldn't put that to other comedians jokes no but the point that he, yeah that he made though was yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, look, look it up if, the, if you're yeah. interested but um he, you know, he's someone who was very childlike himself. Mm -hmm. So when you're a child and you went to your friend's house and, and you, it was cool to kind of like be in bed with them and, mm -hmm. you know, bounce on the bed and just there was a certain intimacy there that wasn't sexual in any way. Sure. It was just comforting. And um, and when I was a child, I, I was, you know, I slept in, not sexual. I know you, I, you don't give me that look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm interested my to uncles, hear this. Yeah, like when I went on holidays and visited my uncles and, you know, we'd have the... Was this Uncle Zamir again with the host? No, no, thank oh, God. No, 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 no. My parents kept me away from Uncle yeah. Samir. But, uh, you know, we'd have siesta, say, from midday to two mm. every day. It's just a cultural thing. This was back in Egypt? Yeah, yeah. when I was a kid, mm -hmm. you know, and we'd, I'd sleep next to my uncles and... You know, they'd be in their underwear and hmm. and it was fine, you know, yeah. <laughs> as far as I remember. There's nothing, you know, it was just innocent and not, people that shouldn't this, this wouldn't have anything to do with you now taking opioids for regressed the... No, no, no. no, no. Like, like, oh. like sort of blocked memories. And yeah. Repressed. And then seeing the therapist wanting to see the... No? Okay. No, uh, never happened, never happened. Just asking, that's all. No, no. I, uh, I had a few... <laughs> No, this is getting good. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, but, no, you know, like I, I remember that distinctly. I remember, it, and there was nothing weird or dirty about it. It was kind of fun. Now, know? is that a common thing in Egypt yeah. for for uh, for children to sleep with? Yeah, like, adult, I sl I sl like, relatives, yeah. Or uncles, yeah, yeah. and yeah, yeah. And what about aunties? Oh, it was much more fun with the aunties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, you know. <laughs> but there were there were interesting I, cultural. I slept with, yeah, with my cousins in bed, and you know, I, every holiday because obviously they don't have room. Right. You know, they're, it's they're, right. they're quite uh, poor, and so they'd have two tiny rooms, and they'd be 
sometimes there'd be 10 people visiting mm -hmm. during the holidays and so they'd have mattresses on the floor mm -hmm. and um and if you're lucky you got you got a spot in the bed with uncle bushra he's a big fat fuck <laughs> and if you're old on you in winter nice and warm yeah yeah, yeah. you could use his gut as a as a doona <laughs> but uh that's all right up to the age of about um 10 i hmm. remember that doing that regularly you know what about your parents? That they they were aware of this. They were fine with yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, totally. There was none of that suspicion. Yeah, it was like you you wasn't even talked about. It, it yeah. was like it never. Ha as far as I know, it was just like no one. You know, there's a few weird incidences which I, I won't discuss. Go on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this wasn't my uncle. This um. No, I wait, 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 turned it into a serious thing. No, that's all right. We're just having an open yeah, chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it didn't really affect me, you know. I, I don't. Um, other things people did, I hold grudges for. Right. But this, we were uh, visiting a, a relative, a family, and he, this guy had two young girls and a young, like a teenage boy, and I was about seven, and he he said, come, I shouldn't laugh, but he said, come in, I want to straighten up your back. The teenage boy. Yeah. Right. I said, okay, because your back's curvy, I, I want to straighten your back. But he thought you had like scoliosis or something? Or? Well, he, no. Right. No, he, so just, it, he, had an, he had an erection. Right. So he, he, he said, just lie on your stomach and I'll straighten your back for you. And he's just lied on me and he's just rubbing his pe penis around my bum. And, um, and he's going to, oh, oh, he's just breathing on my neck. And then my mum walked in. She goes, ah, what are you doing? What are you doing? Get out. And yeah, yeah. Was he reprimanded or no, was it? No, no, she didn't, you know, she didn't say anything. Cause she How long did this go on for before your mum came in? Oh, it would have been not long, you know, maybe, I don't know, I, wasn't, I didn't have a stopwatch. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't going, okay, <laughs> and your time's up. Uh, it, it's, it, he was uh, an older cousin? Yeah, yeah, I was right. maybe six. And was he was? Six, and he was about 11. Right. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's, that was, but you know, these things happen. It's funny. I, now, now, how would you be if you had a, a a son or a daughter? Yeah, yeah. And you walked in, and they were having that done to them. How, how, you, as a hypothetical parent, what would yeah. your reaction be to that? Well, my mum got upset, but yeah. she didn't. She didn't. Um, there's, there's all these protocols, and and but it wasn't something that was. You didn't hear about it often. And um, like when you get on the bus in yeah. Egypt, the buses are like packed like right. sardine cans like if, even the people so sardines, the Japanese sardines would go wow there's a lot of room here compared <laughs> to an egyptian bus you know and it's just as oily and and hot and so people just get on and like, like the japanese trains yeah but it was very common i remember sitting on my dad's lap but this other guy was rooting my ear my head he was just like rooting my head How? he was had an erection and he was rubbing his cock on the back of my head and into my ear I remember turning around and just seeing it and I didn't really know until did your I, dad notice this no or? there's like did you tell your dad or no oh, I, I yeah. was being embarrassed I, you know, I was young I was maybe seven by that stage and um and uh, it ha it's really common so that's common that Re was common yeah. or it is common it is common still common as far as well, in I, Egypt I haven't been there for a while but yeah. It, it was part of the because so, for, for male for grown males to go and rub their cocks on children's heads children or women or they, in egypt now they've got a special uh sort of in the, on the trains anyway there's a special car for women right and no yeah. men are allowed oh, really? because of okay. that problem wow and because a, when sexuality is repressed comes well, out on buses in, uh, in egypt i'm oh, sorry in, uh, on the buses egypt. remember that on the, on, on on the buses? buses yeah the egyptian version yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> but I, re I remember that so it's more clearly. of a four corners investigation yeah, but i don't i don't think back and think oh i must get that guy i really hate that. i mean i don't know what effect it had on me hmm. uh, yeah it but, may, may, it may have been indirect effects right but i i, I but, but you but you would but if that was if you saw that happening to a someone else's kid or a kid you, you would i know you sally yeah. you would get very enraged and very of very course. upset about that and call them but when it happens to you though you're all right you're uh, no no you if it happened to me now i'd be so well, yeah sure sure especially with the you know social distancing sure, but you're saying you're but you're looking back on that I'm as an adult back saying that's no, no big deal no, no, no i'm not i'm not saying it's no big deal i'm saying personally no but for it, you you you're saying it was no big deal yeah if look if i saw that i would definitely intervene sure sure my, i guess my quite, curiosity is I'm like why would you want to do that but yeah. what i'm saying is as far as I know, consciously, it, it didn't really, um, 
like you know people have done things to me in you know, 20 years ago 30 years ago that i still remember and hold yeah. grudges sure. not sexual just yeah. violence and sure. being ripped off by people who are trusted i occasionally <laughs> occasionally i'll wake up and, what the fuck? and, and my wife yeah. and i'll tell my wife she'll sometimes i talk to myself and she'll say what are you saying and i said i'm just remembering this guy she said it was 25 years ago. Yeah. I said, yeah, but it's still there in my subconscious. But this wasn't, this almost like, I don't know why. I don't know, I guess. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you talk to the therapist about this? No, you? no, I've no. never talked to anyone about this. No. Uh, but, um, no, no, I mean, that's, I didn't feel like I needed to. But now looking back on that, do, do you feel any, you know, you, you said like 20 years later with certain circumstances. Yeah. You feel ag- do you feel aggressive about that? No, no that's so my you, point. That's my yeah. point. I, I do hold grudges. I'm not I'm not like a, a peaceful, forgiving person. I do hold grudges. Yeah. I don't, but, if, I don't, but, but what if, the, so a friend at that time this was happening to, and you look back on that, you would be pissed off about look, that happening to someone else. Absolutely. So. As an adult, seeing yeah. an adult do that, I would have to go, what are you doing, man? Yeah. Why, why do you want to do that? But when it's yourself, it's though, disgusting. you don't, you, but when it's yourself, no, you no, don't no. feel... I, it, it, if it happened again, I would, but sure, I'm just saying, sure. looking back on it, I don't have that, uh, I think, I just accept it as one of those things that yeah. just happened mm. regularly to other people and women. Hap- happened in church, man. We, I remember one um, Easter Eve, and I was maybe by that stage, maybe uh, living, maybe eight, eight, eight years old, and it was packed out, and um, and and it's really weird because the women are separate from the men in, in, in the, the Coptic church, right? But somehow this guy snuck around to the women's section and basically was um, just rubbing himself against this girl in the church, and they. They caught him and they bashed him. Wow. Yeah, they yeah. bashed him. And I remember that so clearly. And I, I, I How old were you at the time? I was about eight, but I, I, I didn't know why they were bashing him until hmm. much, many years later. I looked back and go, oh, is that what yes. happened? Yeah. You know, my mum said, oh, that's what happened. And I said, oh, okay. But at the time, I thought, yeah. this is really bad. What, is he Satan or mm. what happened? <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was dark skinned, so yeah. maybe he was the devil. I don't know. I mean, that's, what, that's how you think as a child. But, um, and how was it then coming to Australia after, you know, you know, after growing up in that environment yeah, where yeah, it's yeah. socially accepted? <laughs> and then all then the you buses. Came to Australia. Well, the funny thing, you know, when we first arrived in Sydney, I remember so vividly, I was 10. And I remember thinking the buses, you'd see the buses in the streets mm. and they looked empty. This is in the 70s. Mm. You go, man, there's no one on the buses except the bus driver. In Egypt, he would al- the bus driver would allow people to sit on his lap because there was such was the lack of space. Wow. You know, it's like it's, it was so overpopulated. Now, has any of this come out in Egypt years later? Because, you know, like in Australia, a lot of things from 20, 30 years ago are yeah. in, inappropriate. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Like, just look at the whole George Pell case that just happened. Yeah, yeah. The, does that happen in Egypt? Like, do this, if this is happening Retribution, regularly. Retribution, you mean? Or, or, yeah, yeah, just people being called out later on, 20, no. 30 years later. Look, it's not, uh, it, it, it's... I'd, I'd hate to say this, and, and I'm not because I'm not sure, but I, I'm guessing it's it's not taken as seriously as it is here, mm. you know, because um, they just go. I mean, it's very male-dominated society. It's very um, very authoritarian, mm-hmm. and if you're poor, especially, you make a complaint. So what? They, they don't get out. Yeah, you know, and and. Uh, even and, now, and, after the, uh, the uprising, revolution. the revolution, well, has, well, has that changed in any way? That, well, you know, I made this documentary. Yeah, and, and you it was saw a great it. documentary. Yeah, 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 thanks. Yeah, good, good. Look it up, everyone. It's um. Is it available online now? Yeah, it well, is? you can see it Vimeo with okay. a, with a uh, code. Like you can't. No, it's right. probably not. No, right. no. To answer your question, right. no. <laughs> but uh, there was all the people we interviewed said during the revolution because people came together it was mm-hmm. powerful if you remember this is like, the uprising against Mubarak and the against Mubarak who was a regime. terrible dictator who was uh, extremely corrupt and stole a lot of the money uh, from the people and there was no health system and women were uh, abused and raped in police stations uh, usually the poor women never right. very rarely the, from the upper classes and um, and then suddenly people rose up against this brutal regime mm-hmm. And, and they overwhelmed the authorities. It was five million people in the streets, mm. night and day, protesting. Mm. 
for this. I remember, yeah. Yeah, and, and everyone we interviewed said the sexual harassment against women just was almost non-existent. Really? Yeah, and, and that's a really big problem in Egypt. Normally, but during that time, people were coming together for a cause mm. and, uh, and there was no... Uh, there was no tension between Muslims and Christians. Mm. There was no, no, no tension between rich and poor, women and men were all, it was all just united. And they, because of that level of unity and, and um, solidarity, yeah. it, it crum the regime crumbled. This mm. brutal, tough military regime just went, okay. Yeah. We can't do anything. And then they let him go for a year and then we, we'll take it back again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. What are your thoughts on now as it's, years it's later? It's much worse now. It's much worse because they found out how it happened. So they're monitoring the, the internet more than ever. Right. Um, and they're arresting people, arresting artists, arresting um, writers, journalists, mm. anyone who speaks out, any activist who even says the slightest little criticism mm. it disappears. It's brutal. And we don't want to get like that here. And I'm, I fear that we are heading in that direction. You know that this. this how about how about the, uh, the yesterday? It was announced that if they want to shorten the lockdown, they want everybody to the download app. this app that gives their location and whereabouts at all times. Yeah. Now, if that's not an Orwellian bloody government, well, I don't know what it is. Yes, it's, it's already we've already exceeded uh, George Orwell. Mm. You know, and 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 I think you know just in terms of surveillance and and um and yeah and, and you know it's 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 easy to kind of go along with the conspiracy theorist when you look at it and go oh this this was intentional to control the population hmm. well why not it's possible why well not? yeah it's it is um it's possible but i can't see that how, i can't see people willingly give it away well they do on facebook <laughs> you yeah, know they're right. already giving it away on facebook not but, just that but, they, they, they they now there's like they're saying, oh, no more cash. And yes. within a year, you watch, there'll actually be no cash mm. in existence. You think? Yeah. That's where they're heading. That's because where they're training they, people. In Egypt, they did that because a lot of the black, on the black market, there was um, a currency that was a certain denomination within the currency that was being used. And just last year, people had stockpiled like, like millions of dollars of this. Yeah, yeah. The government just came in one morning and said, that's it, no more. But yeah. there were certain people within um, the government that got the heads up and just relinquished all of that cash. Yeah, yeah. And, and now people have, you know... But all look, the, Cash is will be a thing of the past, and this is this is the prelude to that. You know, they, they say, "Oh, no more cash is dirty," and mm. and so every transaction you make will be monitored. Will will determine. Accountable. Yeah, yeah. But you will then know exactly where you are. Where did you mm. buy this? Mm -hmm. Oh, you were there. What time? Oh, you were there at that time, mm -hmm. and you purchased it. And yeah. we got you on camera as well. Yeah. So it's it's. Um, you know, it's, I just think it's interesting that they would say, use this and say, look, the lockdown's going to continue a lot longer, but if you want to shorten it, use this app yeah, yeah. and we'll monitor it. See, now but, you're thinking like me, I'm glad. But, but, I, don't think that, but I don't think it's like conspiracy theorist thinking. I think it's pretty blatant. It's, it's, and, yeah. and, but my thought is, though, if you're going to go do something, leave the phone at home. It, but you won't be able to uh, forget the phone. It, it's it's the, the you can't buy or sell anything without that transaction being recorded permanently. Oh yeah, um, but that's that's your that's your credit card though. But uh, this is I'm talking about the app on the phone that monitors well, your whereabouts. Difference? Yeah, but if you leave the phone at home, mm -hmm. you go and do something. Yeah. Then if you do something think that's still that, at home. Yeah. No. First of all, they um, if you leave the phone at home, mm. and and you go and buy something. Mm. Or, or well, they have that transaction history of the yeah. purchase. and even if you don't, they've got cameras. What if you use uh, cash? Well, there will be no cash. Mm. You mean Michaela Cash, the employment minister? Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash, <laughs> cold hard cash. Yeah, so uh, no, they, so they, oh, you're you're projecting this into the future when we're well, not, not using not cash even anymore. Well, not even not too distant future. Yeah, you know, it's already. I mean, there, you go to shops now. The ones that are open, and, the, and the, the, most of them have got signs saying yeah, saw that. no cash. We don't accept cash. Yeah. And and it, within 12 months, the world. Is will that your be, prediction? Within 12 months. Sally's prediction. Sally's prediction yes. within 12 months. Nostradamus. No Nostradamus. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> That's from The Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> hey, good one, Nostradamus. <laughs> uh, no, look, you don't have to be a, a prophet. You don't have to be a, a predictor of the future because that's where it's heading. 
That's mm. the, you know, it's, uh, they're well, open about that. Let's wait and see. I, I, I but you have to I give into it. What can you do? You, you are a slave to them. You know, yeah. the, the best way you could do is try to circum navigate the, the, the laws when you can mm. without hurting people, of course. You know, mm. like if you want to, you know, if, if you know, you've got to find blind spots. Mm -hmm. But it's going to get harder, man. They, yeah. they, they, we're, we're, we're basically, people think slavery has been abolished. It has not been abolished, it's just taken on different forms. Different forms, you know. But we're still owned. Sure. We're still, we're still like cattle to these powerful elites. Mm -hmm. And I sound paranoid, aren't I? I know, I know, you're giving me that look like, uh oh. <laughs> no, I was, I was actually, um, I was looking to this uh, interview, I was looking at an interview from a few days ago with Noam Chomsky. Mm. And he was just talking about the current uh, climate in the US, political climate, and Trump's administration. <sighs> It's, yeah, yeah. It, it's frightening, like the things that Chomsky is talking about and predicting if Trump does get in with his next, uh, the next four years. And he will, and I'll tell you, that's my other prediction. Sadly, I hope I'm wrong, but he will get in because people don't change leaders when there's... A war, and this is... This is well, not just war, any kind of um, trauma, troubled times, yeah. hardships. They just, Depression. Yeah, or, they go, oh no, we don't want to change because, you know, this. let's just... But you can look at it too and go, well, can it get any worse? You know? Oh, it can get much worse. No, in terms of, no, in terms of like, well, then why not vote in another? There's no, it's not another great candidate. No, no, really, no, he's not great, but what I'm saying is overall, from history, people tend to not change leaders. Yeah. If there's a, sure. a, a, a tragedy or a, or, a, or a war or something that that's, makes the country unstable. Um, but there's so much misinformation now too yeah. out there. It's like, and and it almost is if you can tell a lie, and just commit to that lie, keep on saying it. But meanwhile, the truth is here the whole time. But you're saying something contradictory to that yeah, truth, yeah. and people go, "Oh, we'll listen to the guy who's talking then." Yeah. So, uh, but it's so blatant. Like in the past, there's nothing new. Yeah. But yeah. It, was, it was a little. It was hidden a little bit better, like in in the past. But now it is so blatant. Well, there's so much information. And if they, want to, if they want to distract you, they'll just throw in information that is wrong. So where do you focus? Well, you just ignore it and take in those. But in <laughs> that's what you do. That is the, uh, Have a nap. That, that, is the, uh, that is the remedy. Well, maybe, maybe we're finding a, a, a cause for this now, a reason well, for this. exactly. I'm glad, yes. I'm glad you come yes, in. Yes, I think. You're not having any of mine. No. I don't, well, I don't well, have enough. Right I don't have enough. Well, Sally, this has been a, a this has been a very revealing and uh, a very eye-opening conversation. We, it that took a had. few turns that we're, we, we weren't, weren't expecting. No, no, yeah. but, but we, we're going to have to add laughs to this, like a laugh track. <laughs> yes, I yeah, had a manic, man manic, rubbing manic his penis laugh. in my head in Egypt. <laughs> Did you ever see that cousin again <laughs> later? Uh, n n no. In, in your adult life, or did you no. ever? No, no, no. no. They, okay. they lived in Egypt. So and, uh, not not even when you went back to Egypt, you never saw them again, or no, okay. no, no, no. So they're a distant cousin. Distant, cousin. Distant, yeah. yes. Yeah. Distant, yeah. Not, not that distant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was a weird experience, but um, maybe we should wrap it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's not get back into that. Let's not get back so. into that. Yeah, look, it's a uh, it's a crazy time, but uh, I don't think it will get worse. I think uh, I think um, it's a scary time for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I think there's. You, gonna you be... mean the COVID? You don't think yeah. it's going to get worse? Or, or I, I, you mean? I, I, just... I don't think it's going to get worse in Australia. Right. Because right. because there's a few reasons. Um, we're uh, we, we've got a lot of space, mm -hmm. and um, and we're an island, mm -hmm. and we're quite wealthy. We're like the fourth wealthiest country in the world, and I think we're managing it better than the Americans, because we're less. Uh, it surprised me. This government is being very generous. Yes. So for a liberal government, they, they're actually going about it the right way mm -hmm. by trying to keep people. If it doesn't go on for too long, I think we'll come out of it. Mm -hmm. Well, and there are advantages, man. I was driving across the Harbour Bridge. At five o'clock on a Friday, normally that's a, that's a three-hour journey. But you're like, Whoosh. well, like nobody's there. Fantastic, yeah. see? That's a, they did it for me. So yes. they don't run like traffic, yes. and uh, and the air seems cleaner. And but things will get back to normal, and we'll get yeah, dirty that, air again. That's, that's what I like. I've, I've been, you know, hopefully optimistic that this will be like a game changer. And pe I think this is good for people to slow down a bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, take their time and address the issues. Like with the environment, but also 
just one on one to take some time to call someone up and have a chat, so a loved mm. one, or having that one on one time with you know you and Kate having that mm. time together. I thought you meant like, you, know, you don't mean like phone sex. No, no, you don't call someone. Like, what are you wearing? No, 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 no that's no, terrible. No. <laughs> Because that's what people are doing now. There's yeah. probably a spike in that, I would imagine. Absolutely, you know? yeah. yeah. It's safe sex, the ultimate yeah. safe sex. Yeah. Unless there's corona all over the uh, handset. Uh, yes. Probably, yeah. Well, I think, I hope that there are, are going to be positives that come out of there this. There already are today. positives. You know, uh, we work, we we comedians, believe it or not, work pretty consistently. You yeah. probably do more gigs than I do throughout the Just year. Just the consistent touring on the road. Yeah. And I've been doing this for 26 years, 27 mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. and, I, and the longest I've ever gone without work would be like two weeks. Yeah. Max. It, it is It is weird, just not gigging. Yeah. yeah, and suddenly everything you've ever lived for, everything you've ever worked at. What you identify your, with. Your identity mm -hmm. is no longer uh, existing. So you're not, you're, and it's and it's a time for only the strong will see this through. Mm. Only the strong. Well, the solution for you and I in the meantime, Sally, is keep on having these chats. Keep on having these chats and just like you know, be. This is you know people whinge like comedians are the biggest whinges. Mm. You know, every comedian I speak to, go, oh, you know, I'd, I'd love to write a film, but I'm just too busy. I'm just bit. I'm traveling all the time. It's hard. Yeah. Well, now. if you don't do it now. You it's were never, never you were never going to do it. You mm -hmm. were bullshitting the whole mm -hmm. time. So uh, it's going to backfire on me. You watch. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do during the corona? Did you write a film? No, I took endones and painted a wall that didn't need painting, and I got paint all over myself. Yeah. Well, I look forward to hearing about uh, your future painting and ho self home renovation. And you will. Excellent. You will. Well, until next time, Sally. Until next time.